Welcome to my channel and I am Subhash Chandra. In this video, let's talk something seriously useful for uh, the interview side actually. See, what is an interview? An interview uh, is a place where you can deliver your knowledge and uh, if your knowledge meets the job criteria, you will be selected. But there is something which is um, hidden behind the interview. It's the mind of the interviewer. See, if you don't read the mind of an interviewer, you will not be able to meet the requirement. You will be meeting the requirement up to 50 to 60 percent though you are technically strong. But you may not be able to be selected for a job. For that, different levels of expectation needs to be met. So, in this video, I will try to share the observation that I had during my experience of growth actually. So, that will help you to improve your uh, better um, performance during the interview. So, let's start from the first one, first point actually. So, if you go to any interview, the first thing you have to have is that what kind of mind that interviewer will generally have. So, interviewer will have some expectation, right? When a company lists out some opportunities, so they will look for some criteria, some requirements. So, that requirement has to be met actually. That could be a technical requirement or uh, that could be a non-technical requirement. So, everything has to be met. It's not only about being uh, core technical actually. Sometimes being core technical uh, also will be the main reason for a rejection because they wanted to have a mixture of a technical and non-technical also. So, you have to understand that. So, for that actually, you have to understand the, the minds of the interviewer. So, the first thing that I wanted to highlight over here is, see, generally, interviewer goes to an interview to with, with the primary quality expectation is whether the person will be able to work in this company for their requirement. See, whatever, you should know the work actually. If you do not know the work, that is the primary your attitude, your behavior, that is the secondary actually. The first thing is that you will be evaluated about whether you will be able to work or not actually, whether you know the subject. Uh, let's say that if somebody asks you about a PNID or a routing, they immediately you start fumbling, no, no, giving some non-directional answers with uh, by not responding to the, the specific point with a specific answer. So, that will give a wrong impression. So, first of all, you should have a strong understanding about the nature of piping design job. It doesn't matter whether you have an experience in oil and gas or petrochemical, but at least you should have a strong mind of the whether you will be able to work or not. That image that you have to share. So, you have to share this, uh, your portfolio to an interviewer in such a way that you can work. You know the process. For that you have to explain no see this is the step one this is the step two this is the step three this is the step four and step y is the delivery so you have to say in this way you have to prepare your narration in that way so that that will give the interviewer an idea about at least you know something so it's not like you are 100 percent zero okay so you know something you have a potential you have learned the work actually it's only about what are the other commercial items that they have to see in order to recruit you so this is the first point actually the second point is the person who can adapt. See, uh, how do an interviewer uh, will evaluate your adaptability within 10-15 minutes? It's only about your behavior during the interview. If you are humble and if you are uh, not arguing type actually, that will give you, uh, give him a green signal that you are adaptive. Otherwise, within 10-15 to 15 minutes, it's not possible for you uh, for any person to evaluate your personality. It's practically not possible. He may prompt you asking different questions, whether you will be, uh, what do you call, mm, adaptable for a different scenario. He will ask, no, we are only doing the isometric uh, preparation, whether you are interested to work in that. There are cases you have to extend um, uh, the working hours uh, without overtime. And there are cases you have to work during the um, weekends. There are cases you have to come early in the morning. So. Uh, these many questions will be prompted. So, your the kind of uh, the responses that you uh, you are giving uh, in the interview and the kind of word. If you are uh, really trying to be a person who is concerned about the the timing and uh, the the respective amount of um, the work that you are delivering for that you are expecting a money or something, that will give some some sort of a wrong image at the beginning of the career. If you are highly experienced. And you have the the no you're familiar about the norms and the policies of any organization that is different. But at the beginning of the career, you have to be little humble 
and uh, if you're truly genuinely if you don't interest uh, not interested to work in such an environment you can say though no no i am not interested to work in such an environment but if you are interested if you the the your requirement is to get the job actually you have to be humble during the interviews and you have to avoid argue, arguing so that is where they can um, what do you call feel that it's all about the feel they cannot evaluate there is no parameter to evaluate your adaptability actually so they can only feel it actually so this is the point number 2 you have to be humble and you have to be non arguing type so that that will give you a positive sign to interview about your adaptability third point is that being a sensible speaker see many of the interviews what happens interviewer will ask something and the candidate will respond something so uh, there will be a gap between the question that has been asked and the answer that has been told actually so you have to be a person basically you should have a, a keen listening skill to understand what has been asked so if you don't understand the question ask uh, for uh, to repeat the interviewer one more time that there is no issue in that actually but if you answer wrongly without understanding the question so that gives a wrong signal one or two times it's acceptable but that depends upon the interviewer but if you are keep on repeatedly uh, making such an excuse without understanding what the speaker is speaking i mean the opposite interviewer is speaking that will give you an indication that you are not uh, so sensible actually being a sensible person actually you have to respond sensibly for the question that has been asked for that if you want to repeat them the question just request them to repeat the question that's it so this is the third point that i wanted to say and the fourth point is that you have to be confident in uh, saying yes or no if you know the subject say yes if you don't know the subject say no don't fumble uh, don't say that no no i know i forgot and i uh, i didn't get time to prepare these kind of excuses are not acceptable if you are confident about your work say yes if you confident about what you have experience and knowledge uh, say yes and if you don't have any experience say no but if you don't have an experience but still you have some uh, theoretical idea share that also saying that i don't have working experience but i have a strong theoretical knowledge so that i can improve in my future so likewise you have to be a confident person so this confidence gives see being humble and being confident it gives an ultra positive signature okay so that kind of attitude you have to show and the last point i wanted to highlight is that you should have a clarity in the knowledge what you have learnt in your experience for example if somebody ask you to tell the difference between slip on flanges and socket weld flanges you should have a clear idea about what is slip on and what is socket being an experienced candidate and if you fumble and if you do not know how to draw do not know how to say the difference between uh, so that will give a wrong impression whatever you have learned you have to have a strong clarity in mind even if somebody confuses actually let's say that i am confusing you during the interview that slip on flanges and socket weld flanges are same how you tell me then why there is a different names so you should not be confused if you have a strong technical knowledge and strong clarity in your mind you will not be confused but if you don't have a strong clarity and a strong technical background then you will be confused so you have to have a clarity so better improve your clarity in whatever you have learned whatever you have not learned that is different actually nobody ex- expect you to have but whatever you have learned you should have a strong clarity so that gives a positive sign for an interview for your selection so follow this five uh, expectations of an interviewer so that will give you some upper hand to clear interviews so i will meet you in another fantastic video until then bye from subhash chandra